Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stupid Gaming. Today I'm going to be building a greenhouse. Now, this isn't just any greenhouse, this includes my dinosaur droppings collection um, and it's going to be built as a single building. Now, I'm going to leave a timestamp, probably around about now, which is going to include all of the materials that you need and quantities. Now, I'm currently in creative mode, so there are going to be some things that you're not going to be able to do in normal mode. Um, so you might see a, a spanner and a hammer in my, or a wrench and a hammer if you're American, in my first slot. That's a destruction tool or a selector or a blink tool. You don't actually have to worry about that because I'm not going to use any fly commands or anything. I want to show this as normal as possible. So I have selected an area that's big enough to contain the build that I'm going to be doing and I've got a hundred of all of the different items. You're not going to need all of those so don't worry about crafting that many but you will need a number of um, greenhouse windows and ceilings, some pipework, some floors, some doors etc. But I will go through all of that now. So let's get to building. Now unfortunately creative mode does not stop you being attacked so things like this Dilophosaurus can still attack me so if you hear any noises then I do apologize so let's try and keep actually let's clear him out first because otherwise that's going to get rather annoying that'll do okay there we go we can start now apologies Right, so first and foremost, we create a base that is four wide by four along. Now, this is our starting point for our build. The reason we don't fill the center in, which is another point I should stress, is because that's going to be the area that our dino droppings fall into. Any of you who've seen my previous dinosaur dropping enclosure will understand the reason for that. Now what we're then going to do is we're going to do exactly the same the other side. So we're going to do 4 by 4 but we're going to fill the centre in this, side, this time. actually gone one further over so that's another 4x4 four four, but we do need to as I've just said go one further over that will become apparent shortly so that's our greenhouse area now there is one other thing that we need to do and this is where it looks a little bit odd so I do apologize but it will make sense in a few so we stick another two out at the side and we almost make a small patio area. Just like that. Okay, so that's the base groundwork. We've got another, another Dilophosaur. I'm sure he's coming for a little bit of uh, attack action. And we've also got a horrible seagull, which will start stealing all of the stuff that I've got to build with. So we need to watch out for him. Okay, so I will select my door and I will put my door there. It's the only door I actually need. So I now select my walls and I can finish my standard building. It's too high, as most buildings should be. Now the reason they are too high is because unfortunately Arc is not very good at uh, heights and one wall high is actually too low for a standard character you will fit through a door but if your ceiling is only one high the wood on the bottom of your wooden ceiling will actually stop you from entering which is ridiculous but unfortunately it's true you'll get stuck on the wood Okay, there we go. So now we do our ceilings, but we have to be careful because we have to leave a gap of two. 
That will again become clear in a minute, so please bear with me. I'll leave gaps where you need to leave them. Apart from that one which I'll get wrong. Let's pick that one up. Trying to do this relatively quickly because the sooner I'm undercover, the less likely that seagull's going to be to attack. Or if it does attack, it's not going to uh, cause any problems. Okay. Right, so, they're the three that we need to leave empty. Now, there is a reason for that, and I should somewhere have hatch frames, which... Ah, there they are. So I have three hatch frames in total. And in fact, I should have gone one further out there, so... Never mind. We can cope, we can cope. Okay. So that's the first section completed. We now move on to our greenhouse. So our greenhouse is such that we put a door there. And then the rest are going to be walls apart from... Actually, I may as well put this up now. We're also going to put a door there. Okay, now move on to the glass walls, which for some reason we seem to have 120, which isn't quite what we need, but there we go. So now, the benefit of a greenhouse, if I place them in the right location, it helps. Benefit of a greenhouse is it gives you 300% growing speed and amount. So every time you get something growing, it will be 300 times faster. Which is exactly what you need when you're trying to make a lot of crops for um, mainly taming or making kibbles or other medical brews, that sort of thing. They're very, very important for late game. Now, what you do have to remember, however, is that glass can be broken by pretty much every dinosaur in Ark. So, there are some things that you can do. I'm not going to do that on this particular um, build, but one thing that I have been meaning to try, and once I do try it, if it works, I will let you guys know, but is building a greenhouse inside a building, because I think the mechanic isn't intelligent enough to know that you're not outside but I do need to confirm that And there we go. That is our very basic entry building. So we've got a greenhouse area. And we've got our main collection area. Now what we can also do is... I don't need to... I'll just put my doors on. Sorry about the screen shake, that's what you get from a Bronto outside your door. Now you can use double doors for these, there's nothing stopping you using the new double doors. Um, in fact, in some cases they can be better. But I'm just using these normal doors for the time being. Okay, so this is where we have a Bronto walking on everything we're trying to do, which doesn't help. But this is where we needed the outside floor. Oh, Bronto, please. I'm just glad they don't damage your building while they're just walking on it, because that would be ridiculous. 
going insane. We need some platforms. Now, you can either use the wooden ramps, which as you can see are okay, or one that I find actually better, and we do need another two floors actually. We need one there, and one here. What I actually find better than these is the new stone steps. And the reason I find these better is because once you've actually placed them, you can convert them into a slope. makes it really nice and easy. Now to make this full I have got to add another three on the outside. I do apologise. Another four on the outside even. I always forget something. This is why I should really write it down but there we go. Okay so that is taking us up to the second level as you can see. Now, what we do on the second level is we get walls again and ceilings. We build three high. Two ceilings across. Now this is just for my own personal bit, this is not essential, but I'm a bit of a soft, uh, soft spot and I don't like my dinosaurs getting rained on when they're standing around. So this is where you're actually going to put your Fiomia. And we get four wooden ra uh, stone railings. And we put two across the front, and then two out. Across the top. That just stops them running out, basically. We then put stone railings all the way around. And that is our first stage. Now, I do put railings around here as well. These are non-essential, they are purely aesthetic, so if you don't feel like doing this, don't worry. Like I say, it's just for me more than anything. And then, just in case, you put some of the stone stairs here and turn them into a ramp again then the reason why is because you're going to be walking Fiomia up here and around here okay so that's that so now what what do we do in here because this is looking a bit bare so before we do anything else let's finish off our Dung beetle pen. Now dung beetles are escape artists, so you do have to be really careful. So we fully pen them in. I use wooden just because they're a little easier to see through. It's not essential if I'm being honest, but... Then we put something to kill that brontosaurus.
Oh. Not what I wanted. It's because I'd placed the railing the wrong side, unfortunately. Because railings can go inside or outside. There we go. And that allows us to climb up. And then we do exactly the same on this side so that we can climb in. You don't have to if you're able to run and jump, but we're not always able to run and jump, unfortunately. There we go. So we can climb up. We can pick up the droppings from the floor there, and then we can climb out on the other side. And then we can put a couple of ladders attached to that side so that we can climb up and get to the Fiomia up here. Okay, so that's that bit. Now, the biggest problem that we have, of course, is we can put our crop plots down, which I'm going to now. Now, I've only got large, but small ones are useful for things like Narca berries and Mijo berries. You don't need large ones for those particular crops. Unfortunately, on official servers, the spacing is a little bit funny. So you will have to uh, bear that in mind. Uh, that's going to be a problem. Right, so. Obviously, on official servers, you're going to have a bit of an issue. But what you can do is you can do those two squares there as small crop plots. Now, why that's saying that it's... That's crazy. Okay. My apologies. I never realised that the uh, official server settings were quite so strict. I tried to set it to official server settings so that you guys could uh, see. So, anywhere that you've got these spaces, you can put normal small crop plots or medium crop plots, either of those will do. And again, you've got the one in the middle. Okay, now you can make this as big as you want. You can make this fully out to the side if you want to, and then you'll be able to get a lot more in. But um, for this demonstration, this is just me showing you what it's like. So these have got, as you can see, greenhouse effect 300%. Unfortunately, as it says at the moment, they're not irrigated currently. So before you can do anything else, you need to create an irrigation system. Now, the irrigation systems are historically a bit of a nightmare, but they have come up with something recently which completely changes all of that in fairness, and that is a system which allows you to connect slightly out of line items so I'll show you what I mean so first and foremost we get our intersection and we place that as well as we can now if you're using wooden floors they're actually easier to do this with so it might be worth considering starting with a wooden floor because the wooden floors line up better. What you can do these days, of course, is you can switch these to block, and the blocks do have a squarer edge to them. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
switch them to block now you can do this on official as well this is now an official thing that's in arc that's not a mod or anything along those lines it's not primitive plus it's their um i think they call it structures plus but i might be wrong with that but uh, basically it gives you the ability to do certain things and that's where you've got the uh, the um, ramps from and the stairs and the double doors and corners and all that sort of thing but for this this build the one that's important is being able to switch these foundations so if we now try and line it up again you'll see that it's a much squarer edge to line up to so if we line it up so it's just about overlapping either side and then we push forward and raise our vision up slightly until it pops upwards and then we place okay now what that's allowed us to do is it's given us a connection point so we can now use a straight connection followed by an intake I'm sure I've got intake somewhere yes I have there they are so we've now got a water system but that doesn't go inside yet it goes in slightly but not much so sorry I forgot to put my ramp into the building for everybody else there we go so we actually have a water pipe that's basically stuck here but it's not doing anything currently so if we can either have a raised raised tap or as in stick it up through the middle of the plot or we can have a normal tap in the, the floor so a raised tap is when you put a vertical post through a vertical water pipe and then stick the tap on top of it or we can do what I'm going to do and add another pipe and then build the pipe sideways off that so you can just about see in some of them obviously not all of them but you can just about see where the pipes are sitting there you go so you can see that one there the green that's red and that's green and they're all connected again it's green can't see that one a lot of these you do unfortunately have to guess because you can't see them Looks like I was putting the wrong thing down. Okay. So now, because we've... Uh, we've put all of the intersections down, we should be able to... place taps
Now that's irrigated all of them. Now you can you can be fancy. I mean, normally what I will do is I'll put one vertical in that corner, and then I'll bring the water over at kind of head height in a network of pipes and tubes. Just looks more more like an irrigation system, but it does take more work. It does take more stone, and this is perfectly functional. As you can see, all of the crop plots are irrigated. Now even the small ones in the corner will be, but if they're not, you have always got the option to put additional. So guys, that is the build. Now this gives you a nice little area that you can put a trough here if you need to. Um, that just means that you can uh, you can basically feed your animals even if it's something that's not really near your main animal keep area um, but this does give you a nice greenhouse area to uh, grow all the crops you need and if you do use the ramps of course now I wouldn't advise this because Fiomias are quite wide but if you want to do a double ramp which is more than possible now you can edge them so it looks a bit more integrated okay guys well thank you very much for watching I do appreciate it um, I hope you've enjoyed this if you have please make sure you do like the video Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, I'm going to start doing more build videos, etc. Um, more information on caving and various other aspects to the game. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you do want to see that sort of content. Make sure you click that bell icon as well so you're notified when I do upload those extra videos. And please, please, please leave me a comment down below. What do you think of the build? Um, I know there's a lot of things where I had to go back to them and change them but unfortunately that's just the nature of it um, there are a lot of things which don't quite go to plan as I say if I was uh, thinking a bit more I'd probably have made the greenhouse section a little bit bigger so that I could have fit uh, more rows more items in the standard server settings again are a little bit odd um, and the fact that I was pressing the wrong button and putting intakes down rather than intersections also didn't help. But uh, you get the idea. That's basically a complete build for a greenhouse. Fully functional. I will do a test about putting roofs over just to see whether it does affect it. Um, but hopefully it won't. So, yeah, leave me a comment down below. What do you think? Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you for my next video very soon. Bye for now.